We want to get back to some of our breakdowns because we are over an hour into the show and we haven't talked about DJ Lagway yet, who I know is a fan favorite just from what he did in his senior year, those video game type numbers, Andrew. But he's also a favorite in those scouting meetings because he has just been going up, up and up. Yeah, Max Preps Player of the Year. They announced that on a Monday. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the Gatorade Player of the Year nationally. Jackson Arnold won that award last year. Look, you see up here on the screen, Hendon Hooker as his player comp. That's a bit dated. We met on Sunday, Saturday. We were burning the midnight oil, and we said, I said, hey, to my team, Gabe Brooks, Hudson Standish, Cooper Patagon, we need to find a player comp for DJ Lagway. We could not find one. I think he's similar to AR, you know, AR-15, Anthony Richardson. I think he's similar to Jalen Hurts. I think he's similar to Cam Newton. There is no exact one. Cam Ward, who's in the transfer portal out of Washington State, Cooper Patagon has brought that up multiple times. Look, this kid was at the Elite 11 Finals, and coming out of that a three-day competition, I said, I like where we have him ranked at 40th. Did I think he was going to be a five-star? Wasn't sure. Wanted to see how the senior season would go. Well, he improved in every statistical category. 59 touchdown passes, Texas 6A record, averaged 9.5 yards per carry. He was a one-man show for Willis. Best record in over 60 years. First time there in the re or state semifinals since 94. And what's crazy one other player at Willis High School is going to sign today. It's not like he's playing on some all-star squad. So I think this guy has the tools. I think he is so essential for Billy Napier to hold on to. Steve Wolfong has reported USC's involved. I talked to DJ Lagway's father on Monday. It sounded like they're going to make a final decision. Houston's kicking the tires. Clemson's kicking the tires. Texas A&M has been in there. I mean, this guy is the real deal. There's, I think there's a chance for us he can finish as the number one quarterback, but he is going to transform some program because you don't want to face him. He can beat you with his arm and his legs. Lincoln Riley knows a thing or two about yes. quarterbacks. I think we could all agree on that. And, and for DJ Lagway to be maybe that first phone call that the Trojans are making after losing a Malachi Nelson from your quarterback room, it just speaks volumes. I think a big thing, too, with DJ Lagway is that he's also been actively recruiting players to Florida. So he has been fully locked in, not just for himself, um, but continuing to stockpile talent around him. Another quarterback that we would love to highlight is Julian Sayan. We talk about this Alabama class. It's, of course, highlighted by, by that signal caller. A smooth operator. We love <laughs> what he's able to do in the pocket, but he's got some sneaky athleticism to be able to do things on the run, off-platform throws. He, he's able to kind of make plays outside when he's rolling out. And, and you know, you look at his, his makeup. You look at the prototype Southern California cliches. He lives at, at a beach town, Carlsbad, just in between between Los Angeles and, and San Diego. Uh, but then when he steps on the field, he's all business. And it, that, that calm demeanor that maybe you see off the field, it, it evaporates because he's that type of playmaker. And when you think about the last two West Coast quarterbacks out of high school that went to Alabama, Bryce Young, Tua Tango Vailoa, Julian Sain has all the makeup, all the potential to be the next big West Coast star for the Crimson Tide. He MB was the Elite 11, yeah, MVP. Uh, You're about to say that. You watched him play. What did you see? <laughs> yeah, he was the most consistent guy over the course of the three days. Now, does he have the strongest arm? I don't know about that, but it was probably the most accurate arm as we went through the seven-on-seven -seven play, the pro days, and all that stuff. 30-4 and four on Friday nights for Julian Say. And I look at what Alabama has taken at quarterback in recent years. You know, it was Ty Simpson two cycles ago, Eli Holstein. I, this is the guy that gets me fired up. I think he can step in, not saying he's a game manager, but I think he's someone that can take care of the football, put the Crimson Tide in position to win games. Early on in 2023, Alabama was trying to figure it out, right? Remember, they almost lost to USF in that rain game? That was crazy. And then they decided, all right, we're going to run the football. And I, I think Julian saying. Mr. Consistent is what I have written down next to him. Nine and one as a senior. Watch that game he lost. He played good enough to win. They, it went to overtime. The other team decided to go for two, and Julian saying didn't even have a chance, you know, to keep playing. So uh, I think it's a big one when you think big picture about Alabama and the future of that program. I would label him as the next guy. And obviously, they're going to be in the transfer portal market. Everyone is, but you still got to build it through the high school ranks. Keep an eye on Julian saying Georgia was involved. Mm -hmm. Texas was involved. And when you think about Bama missing out on Arch Manning in the 2023 class to get Julian saying when they did it was huge for Tommy Reese. Speaking of getting a quarterback when they did, another top five guy that you watched in L.A. at the Elite 11 Finals, Luke Cromanhawk. Florida State has been get on this guy early before he even started a game or played a game in high school. That's right. He threw for Mike Norvell in the Seminoles in a summer camp. 
Mike Norvell liked it, it? Yeah. and they took his commitment. Uh, Luke Romanhock at Savannah Benedict Christian, first two years played wide receiver and safety. He was behind Holden Gurner, another Elite 11 finalist now at Auburn. I saw Luke in his third career start. He came down to Miami to play a game. Texted my guys right away, hey, we got to get him in the top 247. I think the sky is the limit. Dynamic athlete fits what the Seminoles want to do so well. You think about Jordan Travis, how they move and roll him out. How many times did he bail the Seminoles out on key third and long situations with his leg? Luke Krumenhaw can do just that. Ryan Tannehill has been the comp from the jump for Luke, and it's just, it fits so well. Remember, Tannehill played some wide receiver at Texas A&M. Well, you got Luke, who was playing some safety and wide receiver. Special teams as well, you can find those highlights on there. He's got a strong arm. Still think he needs some polish, probably a year or two away. We'll see what Florida State does in the transfer portal at quarterback, but stacking him after taking Brock Glenn, who we saw in the ACC title game, I mean, that room is in good shape. A work in progress is what we wrote down after the Elite 11 finals because you could tell that the upside was there. And maybe he didn't have the strongest arm or he wasn't the most mobile outside the pocket or, you know, maybe mechanically wasn't as fine tuned, but you get good coaching around that. And, and like a Mike Norvell has been able to do at the quarterback position, I, I think the, the sky is the limit for a player like Luke Romanhawk. CJ Carr, another top five quarterback <laughs> that uh, we want to run through, and the comp for him is Davis Mills. What was the thought process behind that? Well, we're going to get to some some awards here in a little bit, but he's <laughs> he's kind of the prototypical quarterback. Obviously, mm -hmm. Grant grandson of Lloyd Carr, the legendary uh, Michigan head coach. I think I'm a little bit more bullish on him than maybe some of the other guys here at 24/7 Sports. But I I always like to watch quarterbacks toughest opponent and what CJ Carr consistently did that his ability to create I call him an elastic athlete he extends plays and you know he's a guy with a tennis background he, he plays on chess.com it's the IQ as well you know he's so he's over 6'3 he's got the arm he's got the mechanics it's all dialed in he the footwork's clean I just think it's the combination of all that stuff why I'm comparing him to Davis Mills, who was the same story coming out of high school. I think for Notre Dame, such a huge addition. When Marcus Freeman took over there, we wondered what were the quarterbacks going to look like. So last cycle, they get Kenny Mitchie and Sam Hartman. This year, it's CJ Carr, who was already practicing in South Bend. My friend Tom Loy tweeted out some video. I think it was yesterday. I was already watching it. Uh, and then Riley Leonard. And then in the 2025 cycle, they got this wild card named Deuce Knight, who we'll be talking about a year from now, him committed. So Marcus Freeman has rebuilt that. It's in great shape, uh, this, the, the signal caller position. You mentioned the IQ. And one of my favorite parts of watching quarterbacks in seven on seven, and I don't want to hear from the seven on seven bashers, right? Because <laughs> for quarterbacks, it's really useful. Mm -hmm. But I love standing behind them in the pocket, filming and, and seeing what they see and the decision making and how they're able to layer throws or put touch on throws deep. CJ Carr had some of the prettiest deep balls that I could see or that I saw this past spring and last winter at these seven on seven tournaments. Um, really good anticipation. Mm -hmm. uh, Notre Dame has been going into the transfer portal, so maybe not needed to go in and, and be a guy right away, but he has the, the foundation to be a really productive and a really good quarterback for the Irish. Yeah, we'll talk more about that quarterback room uh, stacked right now from what they got in last class, what they've got in the transfer portal, and what they have coming in in CJ Carr. Uh, we will continue that discussion later on in the show, but let's talk more quarterbacks because from this group, from 6 to 10, the one that stands out to me, Andrew, is Ryan Puglisi because I feel like all the dogs fans that are watching right now say, okay, now who is our quarterback? So tell them, who is I know. your quarterback? My, my guy Blair over here cast some doubt over the future of the position for the Bulldogs. Pugga, that's what I call him, Ryan Puglisi. I don't know who came up with that. I think it's the greatest nickname. If you're looking for an NIL shirt, Love it. You know, contact me and Cooper Patagna at Oyster <laughs> Boys State. We got you taken care of. Ryan Puglisi, saw him at the Elite 11 Finals. Thought he threw fastball after fastball after fastball. He's a baseball kid. He's actually uh, three athletes ever have been to the Area Code Games, which is an elite baseball event, and the Elite 11 Finals. Ryan Puglisi is one of them. His senior tape saw more touch as a passer. Thought he figured things out. Hey, I don't need to throw it 90 miles per hour. I'll layer the football in there. Uh, strong arm, obviously. He can get it to the deeper third. And then I think the sneaky aspect of his game, what he doesn't get enough credit for, is him as a runner. And not just when things break down, on designed runs. He can do just that. You think about him going to Georgia. Mike Bobo's there. 
Georgia can get a little more creative behind the Great Wall of Athens. So Ryan Puglisi, we're going to see him in the All-American Bowl, but stock up after this senior season. What you're saying is he needs to start painting the corners a little bit. <laughs> He's a baseball guy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was one thing that we were concerned about at the Elite 11 Finals in Los Angeles because he wasn't putting the touch on the ball. He was just kind of showing off the arm strength. And, and, and it's maybe a little bit difficult to rein yourself in in a setting like that when you're trying to impress and say, hey, look, my name is Puga. I can throw the ball 100 miles an hour. Um, but yeah, that's that's a, an area where he still needs to improve and, and still make strides. But he's, yeah, he's got a tremendous upside. He's just not a five-star in the rankings like a Dylan Raiola would have been in, in this class for, for Georgia. A close second behind Elijah Rushing and the all-name team has got to be Aaron Nolan. Outside of that name, though, Blair, what makes him so special at the quarterback position? This might be recency working in, in mm -hmm. my favor here, but he's got a lot of Michael Penix to him. Mm -hmm. in, in the, he's a smooth lefty with with some nice touch on, 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 the, on the throws beyond 30 yards, and, and he was really decisive when we saw him at the Elite 11. I think he was really quick with his, with his decisions, making throws when he needed to when he need, needed to make them. The timing, leading his receivers, uh, another player who's really good outside the pocket and can kind of make some throws. Not exactly a Michael Vick type, but he's going to be able to pick up some of those tough yards that you need to pick up in the Big Ten. 10,164 yards, 126 touchdown passes. That is the high school resume for. Aaron Nolan. I think that's actually his real name. It might be Prentice Aaron Nolan. I, I asked him to Fair. see it on his birth certificate. He wouldn't pull it up for me uh, back then. This, to me, I was talking with someone at Ohio State on Tuesday. I think he, between the years, his mentality, his mindset, Aaron Nolan is the best in this class. Like I, leader, everything is checks off every box. Led the most prolific high school offense in Georgia State history. As a junior, as a senior, new offensive coordinator, lost some of his weapons, took a step back, but we're not concerned about him. You brought up Michael Penix. That is my player comp for Air Nolan. And both those guys throughout the Elite 11 Finals, remember every year they bring a few college counselors out there. I think you would have been hard-pressed to figure out which one uh, is about to be selected in the NFL draft and which ones are headed to Ohio State. There's not that big of a gap between the two. Well, we talk about quarterbacks as just being a different breed of human. There's a fantastic story by our national college football writer, Brandon Marcello, about Air Nolan and what makes him different. So you can check that out on 247sports.com. Also, when we're talking quarterbacks, we love comps, we love superlatives. So we run through a few superlatives here. Video game star pick is a man by the name of Demond Williams who is committed to Arizona. Why is he your pick for video game star? Well, we're getting NCAAs at 2024 or 2020. This summer. <laughs> this summer. Them. Okay, well, let me tell you, Demond Williams is going to have 99 speed. He's like a 4 4 kid on the lasers track kid and then he's gonna have like 98 arm strength broke down a few of his games from arizona state playoff he threw it in the air over 50 yards five different times completed each one of those passes this kid is electric now he ain't six foot five he's you know five eleven but he is a guy that can run around make defenses miss I think he does not get it good enough credit as a passer. His yards per attempt is some of the best we have seen in this 2023 class. He can make all the throws. He's just so on the smaller side. But if I'm playing the video game, uh, I want him. And I think you headed to Arizona. You got Noah Fatidi there. You know, he runs around a bunch. I think this is a guy who is going to be, if we had college football fantasy, kind of a first round pick. Do you have any tag flags? It's, it's <laughs> Noah Fafita. Fafita. Yeah. But Damon Williams is going to wear out the left joystick yeah. when, I ha when I play that game. I'm going to pick Arizona mm -hmm. and have a ton of fun throwing the rock around because he, he can do everything. You, mm -hmm. you need him to escape pressure, he can do that. You need him to pick up uh, 10, 15 yards on the option keeper, he can do that. If you need him to layer throws deep or or maybe pick up a first down on a third and seven. He can do that because his timing is so good. Another player we saw at the Elite 11, maybe a, a, an event that doesn't showcase his full skill set because he's a pads, Friday night type of player, uh, but he's he's got all the makeup, all the tools, and he's plenty motivated to get into Tucson and compete with Noah Fafita for that starting job. That's how, that's how much trust he has in his ability. You mentioned we were talking about Notre Dame commit CJ Carr, that he is the pocket prototype. Why is he your pick for that award? I think he's got, it's the blend of the arm and then the football IQ. I think he's a potential field general. I mean, if you hold some NFL executives, maybe not in this current era, after we've seen more and more mobile guys like run first guys, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson, uh, 
they would want a CJ car. That's what you want them to come out looking like. Again, I, I think he doesn't get enough credit now, just how he moves around and scrambles. So to me, he's kind of the prototype. This is the guy, right? He's the guy that's been coached up uh, all throughout his youth. I, Clean mechanics, clean footwork. I don't know what analogy you need to use. A Michigan legacy, so it took a lot of bravery for Oof, him to yeah. commit to, to Notre Dame, and, and I think that in itself speaks to, uh, I think, his self-awareness and saying, hey, look, I can step out of this shadow. I could easily go to this program that's in the competition for a college football playoff spot every year and, and make my own legacy. I think that's something that you have to applaud as well. The cerebral assassin, your pick for that is Julian Sayan. He's a guy that we broke down a little bit earlier, but why do you use the tag cerebral assassin when talking about him? As a senior, he completed 74.5% of his passes. Ball Pretty doesn't good. touch the ground, right? Yeah. Cerebral assassin, he's just a sniper back there, right? Hitting his marks. What stands out about the Elite 11, best quarterback all three days there, took home the trophy. He got in the car, drove, he, you're better with California geography than me. He drove, <laughs> he drove probably five hours drove, to, drove, get, drove, to get 30 miles. To go yep. 30 miles, shows up at the OT7 finals and is competing and playing right away. No other quarterback did that. And he was excellent there. He was on our OT7 finals dream team. This is a guy that he just, he just hits the marks. So to me, it's the accuracy again, highest completion percentage in the class here for 2024. And I want to give a tip of the cap to Greg Biggins, who's been on Julian Sands since he was like a freshman. And mm -hmm. he's been calling him one of the best quarterbacks, regardless of class out West since then. And uh, I think he really, I think, stamped himself early on in the process, but he's continued to get better, continued to elevate his game. And it was all culminated with, with a really, Really impressive senior season. <laughs>